Hey there, this is Curtis Stage. Welcome to Curtis Stage Video Tutorials. Today's tutorial is on the Clone Stamp Tool in Photoshop. So what is the Clone Stamp Tool and how does it differ from the Patch and Content Aware? And also, how are we going to use this tool effectively and non-destructively? So let's get started. So I have an image open in Photoshop here that I took in New York City and I would like to, I like it, but maybe I'd like to add some dramatic clouds in the area that had clouds, but there was really no definition to them in my photo. So maybe I want to pull in some more dramatic clouds. Now these are maybe too dramatic, but you'll get the idea. Now, one of the things that we want to consider with the Clone Stamp tool is that it is a lot different than the Content Aware Move tool or the Patch tool. And this is why. The Patch tool, the Content Aware tool, those are amazing. They blend pixels together. So their job is to look at what you want to heal or patch or move, and it's going to take that object and try to blend it with the pixels around it. The Clone Stamp is really just a copy and paste tool. So essentially, you're taking an area of pixels from one spot and you're copying into them another spot. You say, well, why don't I just use the Selection tool and do that? You could, but this saves you a lot of steps. The Clone Stamp tool, though, has some powerful pros that the Patch and Healing and Content Aware don't. One of the things that is a con for the Patch Healing and Content Aware tool is you have to be on the layer directly editing the layer that you're on when you use those tools. In other words, you cannot patch from another layer into a layer. If you wanted to put wrinkles on someone's face, they would have both have to be on the same layer. That makes that difficult. With the Clone Stamp tool, the pro with it is, is that you can clone from anywhere. You can clone from layer to layer. Uh, you can clone from document to document. So that's what we're going to do today. So that's one of the big differences between the two tools is to be able to use this tool to copy from one document to another. And let's get started on that. So I have this image. I want to see the cloud image and this New York image side by side. So I'm going to go up to window, arrange, and I'm going to pick up two up vertical so they're side by side. Now one thing that you want to remember is these images probably should be similar in size. Where usually people run into problems with the Clone Stamp tool is they'll have one image, let's say this New York City image, and its image size and pixel dimension is maybe a lot bigger than the image that they want to clone from. Whenever you're cloning from one image to another, you want to make sure that those images are similar size so that your cloning will be, uh, will, will just work better. And I'll show you an example of that in a second. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, with this city image, I have my background layer, but I don't want to clone into my background layer because that would be destructive editing. We want to try to use this tool non as non-destructively as we can, so we want to create a layer that would go on top of this layer. So I'm going to add that layer now by going down to the bottom of my layers panel and creating a new layer. You'll notice that this layer is transparent. It has a checkerboard on it. I don't need to name it right now, but this will end up being the clouds layer. Now what I want to do is go back to my background layer. I'll unlock that too. But I'll go back to my background layer. And I'm going to select this sky. Now there's multiple ways to do that. I'm guessing the easiest way to do that right now would be the magic wand tool or the quick selection tool. So if I take the magic wand tool and I click on this in this area, well, look, this is a little bit difficult here. It really depends on what my tolerance is. So I need to adjust my tolerance if I'm going to just click in the sky. So I adjusted right there. And that looks pretty good. I had a tolerance of 38. And you can see my marching ants are just adhering to that outline of the sky and the buildings. Really what this tool does is it looks, when I click on a pixel in an image, it looks for pixels surrounding it that are the same color or close. The higher that tolerance there, the more pixels it's going to pick up. Or yeah. The higher the tolerance, the more pixels it's going to pick up. The lower the tolerance, if I bring this down to like four and I use this tool, well, it's not going to pick up as many pixels surrounding. It's going to find all the ones that are the same. It's not going to pick up too many. So I'm going to Command D, Deselect, and bring my tolerance up, you know, maybe 37, 38, and that looks pretty good. The other tool that I could use would be my 
quick selection tool, and it works much the same way. Uh, with this tool, I want to go right up here to the options bar where it says add to selection, this little button right here, add to selection. And then what I do is I kind of paint down into the cloud. So I started painting and you see how I selected that. So perfect. Now, uh, when I bring the clouds in here, I do not want them to come on layer zero, my background layer. I want them to come up on this transparent layer. So I'm going to click on that layer so that it is selected. Now I'm going to go over here to my clouds and I'm going to click on that. I'm going to go to my clone stamp tool. The clone stamp tool has some options as well. Um, your mode, you want it to be normal here if this is a direct copy of clouds from one place to another. But you could use blend modes as well to mix and composite your imagery. But I'm going to keep this on normal. My opacity is 100. My flow is 100. And I'm going to sample this current layer. But you could sample um, multiple things. You could sample all layers. Let's say you had a stack of layers. You could sample multiple layers at one time. I'm going to stick with current layer. I'm going to um, make my brush big here. So I can use my bracket tool on my keyboard to enlarge that. So I'm using my bracket to the right to make my brush bigger. and. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up clouds over here, and then I'm going to drop them over here. And they're going to only be inside that sky space. Uh, let me zoom out of this image just a little bit so I can see what area of clouds I want to get. So maybe I want some clouds with this light in it, but probably not because there's no light on these buildings right here. So I really want to take this area kind of right in here maybe and avoid this area over there. So I'm going to option click will pick up pixels. So this is how I'm going to uh, pick up the pixels that I want to clone. I hold down option or alt on my keyboard. So if I'm on a PC, it'd be alt on a Mac, it's option. And I'm going to click and that picks up the pixels. You can see kind of there that they're loaded into my brush. I'm going to talk about my brush here in a second. I really didn't talk about that, but um, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to start painting. Really when I, when I pick up pixels, I want to look at where I'm picking them up from. So I picked them up right from the middle of this document. And when I drop them, I want to kind of start in the same spot on the document that I'm going to, my destination. So in my source, if I'm picking up right here, I also want to drop in my destination about in the same spot. So now I can paint in here. See, now look, if I did, now this is good. Here's what happened here you can see that I see these edges on the top and bottom, and that's because these two images are not the same size. And this is what I wanted to point out, is that this is a mistake that people make quite a bit, in that when you're getting a clone image, you want to make sure that the two images are the same size. And these clearly aren't. My New York City image is bigger than this cloud image in terms of height. So let me go up here to my image size and check out what my size is. So my height is 5,000 pixels on this city picture. Now I could make this picture smaller, but that's my master image. I really don't want to do that. I could make this picture bigger, or of course I could go get another picture of clouds that has a height of 5,000 or close to it. I'm going to go to image and image size, and I'm pretty good on this height. My width was great, so I could rotate this image actually, but I'm going to increase this height here. Um, and when I do that, I'm going to go to you know like 5,000. And it should look okay. Uh, the only issue, of course, is, is you might get a little pixelated when you do something like that. So you want to be careful. So now when I have this increase, and you know, again, it's, it's going to be a large file now. So there I go. So now I'm going to option click in that same spot, right around in here in the middle of the image. So I just option clicked or alt click. And now when I go over here, I'm going to paint in that same spot. Now notice, again, I'm on my transparent layer. When I start painting in here, now I won't get that edge because this was coming from an image that's about the same size. So Command D, deselect, and now you'll see that that clone is in there. So it is on its own layer, which is great. In fact, what makes this even better that that's on its own layer. Now this doesn't really match, of course, but I want to get it to match a little bit better. So how am I going to do that? I want to maybe add some color effects to that layer. So I'm going to go to add a layer adjustment. I'm going to go to layer, new adjustment layer. And in here, in the new adjustment layer, I could, there's many options in here. Um, I, what I really want, probably want to do is um, try an adjustment layer like hue and saturation. So I'm going to click that. Um, 
what I want to do is I want to make sure that this adjustment layer only affects my clouds and not the city. So I'm going to check this use previous layer to create a clipping mask so that it will only affect the clouds. And now with my properties panel open here, I can adjust the color tone of this image. And I want to go more towards green because my, my filter that was on my on Photoshop was kind of in this green tone. And I want to kind of alter this image to get to kind of match that. I'm taking my saturation down and kind of moving into this greenish tone. And now I've got this kind of, yeah, I'm just eyeballing it here, but I've kind of got this matching. And I could brighten this up or lighten it. Something like that. So, so this green yellowish doesn't look real, obviously, but I just want to kind of, if I'm compositing an image together, I'm doing something kind of surreal, this kind of would make sense. So something like that. So this new adjustment layer, if you look at it, it has a mask on it and there's this little arrow that's pointing down. That area of arrow is indicating that it's only affecting this layer. Let me turn it off. Uh, really quick, this clipping mask that I put on here, this hue saturation adjustment layer clipping mask. If I hold down option and click in between the two layers, you'll see this little icon pop up and that will disable it. And now you can see that my um, color adjustment, my hue saturation color adjustment is affecting both layers now. So if I go over here and I do this slider, it's affecting both layers, which could be kind of cool, but I don't want that. So I'm going to put that back on, but I just wanted to show you how you take it off. If you hold your mouse in between the two layers, hold down option, you'll get that icon. And then it is now clipping only to the cloud layer. So that's the basics of how the clone stamp tool works in Photoshop going from one document to another. It can certainly clone from layer to layer inside my document. Another thing that the patch uh, and the healing and the content aware can't do is you cannot clone from one layer to another. So I wanna emphasize that. The uh, clone stamp tool, I can clone from anywhere. I can clone from inside the image from, from different layers, or I can clone from outside the image like we did today using a second image. All right, that's been another Curtis Stage tutorial. I'll see you soon.